Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about factored form of a quadratic function. So what I'm going to do is give you the form first and talk a little bit about the components, and then we'll do a bunch of examples. So quadratic functions can also be written in a form called factored form, and it looks like the following. If our function is f, we have f of x is equal to a times x minus r times x minus s. So here a is still the leading coefficient. This is the same leading coefficient as in standard form. And then we have this now written as two factors being multiplied together. So we have x minus r, that's our first factor, and then x minus s, the second factor. So r and s here are just some real values. And specifically, they are the horizontal intercepts of the quadratic function. So x equals r would be one horizontal intercept, and x equals s is the other horizontal intercept. So you'll hopefully start to believe me as we do more examples that these values r and s really are the horizontal intercepts, but let me just walk you through a little bit of an abstract explanation first to see if that helps you believe it. So when we input r into the function, we should get out zero if it is in fact a horizontal intercept. So a horizontal intercept has the property where it's at some value on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis, but the y value is zero, or the output value is zero. So when we input r, we should get zero out if it is in fact a horizontal intercept. So let's try this. I substitute in r for x, then I have a times r minus r times r minus s. Now I'm noticing here that r minus r becomes zero, and so I have a times zero times r minus s, and then anything times zero is just zero. So I'm getting zero as my output that goes with the input of r, which means this corresponds to the point r zero. So r zero, whatever value r is, is going to be a horizontal intercept. Now the same should be true for s. I'll write it out here just to show you. So when we input s into the function, we should get out zero. So I have a times s minus r times s minus s, then that s minus s becomes zero. So I have a times s minus r times zero, and anything times zero is zero. So when I input the value s, I'm getting out zero, meaning this corresponds to the point s zero, which is also a horizontal intercept. Okay, so this is our factored form. What I'm going to do is show you some examples of quadratic functions written in factored form and show you what they look like in standard form as well. So I wanna kind of convince you that factored form is another way to write a quadratic, and then we'll go through each of the examples and talk more about the details. So starting with our first function, we have x plus two times x plus three. Now when we have these two terms being multiplied together, we need to distribute all the terms if we were to multiply it out. So we would do x times x, that's x squared. Then we would do x times three, that's a plus three x. Then we would do two times x, that's plus two x. And then we would do two times three, which is plus six. So we could combine the like terms, the two x terms, and so we'd have x squared plus five x plus six. So this is the standard form version of this quadratic function that we started in factored form. So the factored form, when we multiply it out, can be written this way in standard form. So we like the factored form because it shows us the horizontal intercepts, but it's just another way of writing the same quadratic function. So let's practice this with the rest of these. Next I have x minus one times x plus six. I do x times x, which is x squared, plus x times six, which is six x. And then I have negative one times x, so that's a minus x. And then I have negative one times six, so minus six. Then I combine those two x terms and I have x squared plus five x minus six. Okay, I just wanna go through these other two quickly. So when we do x minus four times x minus nine, I'm getting x squared minus 9x minus 4x plus 36, and then combining like terms, I get x squared minus 13x plus 36. Okay, this next one's a little different. It's just x times x minus seven. So here I just get x squared plus seven x, and that's already in standard form. All right, then lastly, we have negative three times x plus 10 times x minus one. So this has a different a value. The a value, the leading coefficient is negative three. So what we're going to do is just multiply through the two terms first. 
So I'm gonna do x plus 10 times x minus one and leave that negative three for last. So I get negative three times the quantity, x squared minus x plus 10x minus 10. Then we can simplify. So this is negative three times the quantity x squared plus 9x minus 10. And then we can distribute in that negative three. So negative three x squared minus 27x plus 30. So that negative three times the negative 10 is a positive 30. And now this is in standard form. So our factored forms can get increasingly more difficult or just more complicated, but they can all eventually be written in standard form. So this is just to kind of convince you that factored form is in fact another way to write a quadratic function. But now let's do some more examples where we get into the details of what these look like or how they work. So for each of these functions, we're going to find the horizontal and vertical intercepts. So I'm going to repeat this process five times. So it's kind of a lot and you might find that you don't really need all five examples, but I'm going to work through them here. So the rest of the video is just these examples. I'll go through each quadratic function, do the horizontal and vertical intercepts, and then I'll also show the graph and make some connections. All right, so for our first function, let's say we have f of x equals x plus two times x plus three. So we're going to find the horizontal and the vertical intercepts, and let's just remind ourselves of how we do that in general. So the horizontal intercepts occur at some point x0. What's noteworthy is that the output value is zero. So to find these, we would set our function equal to zero. For the vertical intercepts, these have a x value or an input value that's zero. So here we would set x equals to zero in order to find the vertical intercepts. So let's go through these one at a time. We'll start with the horizontal intercepts. So part of what we like about factored form is that it makes this process easy. So we'll take our function, we'll have f of x equals x plus two times x plus three, and we're gonna set it equal to zero. Now the principle we're going to keep coming back to here is that if we have two things multiplied together and their product is zero, one of those items must have been zero in the first place. So you can't multiply two things together and get zero unless one of them was already zero. So what this tells us is that one of the terms, one of the factors, must be equal to zero in order for the product to be equal to zero. So we set each term equal to zero. I have x plus two equals to zero and x plus three equals zero. And now I solve for x. So I just move these values over to the right hand side. So I'm getting x equals negative two and x equals negative three. So these are our horizontal intercepts, x equals negative two and x equals negative three. Okay, then for the vertical intercepts, what we do is substitute in x equals zero. So we replace x with zero, I'm looking at f of zero, then this is zero plus two times zero plus three, which is the same as just doing two times three, which is six. So this tells us that our vertical intercept is the point zero six. All right, so we found the intercepts. Let's look at the graph here and just make sure everything's looking good. So I've graphed x plus two times x plus three. And what I wanna do is remind us of our factored form by writing these as x minus a number. So I'm gonna write this as x minus a negative two and x minus a negative three. So that minus minus is really a plus. Then the negative two corresponds to the horizontal intercept of negative two and the negative three corresponds to the other horizontal intercept. So this comes from our factored form, x minus r times x minus s. So here r would be negative two and s would be negative three. And those are our horizontal intercepts. Also, I'll just point out, we can see our vertical intercept is zero six like we had found. Okay, let's repeat this on the next example. We have g of x is equal to x minus one times x plus six. So we'll first find the horizontal intercepts. We set the output equal to zero. So we take our function g of x, which is x minus one times x plus six, and set it equal to zero. So now we use this property that if these two terms multiplied together equals zero, one of the terms must equal zero. So we do x minus one equals zero and x plus six equals zero. So if either of these is equal to zero, then the equation is true. So we just solve for x. So I'm getting x equals one 
and x equals negative 6. So these are my horizontal intercepts. Then for the vertical intercepts, we set x equal to 0. I substitute in 0 for x, so we do 0 minus 1 times 0 plus 6. This is the same as negative 1 times 6, which is just negative 6. So here our vertical intercept is 0, negative 6. Let's check this on the graph. So I've graphed our function x minus 1 times x plus 6. Again, I'll rewrite this more clearly in factored form. So x minus 1 is already in the form x minus r. So 1 is our horizontal intercept. Then I'll rewrite the other term as x minus a negative 6. So this indicates that negative 6 is the other horizontal intercept. Then lastly, we can notice that our vertical intercept is also right. It's 0, negative 6. All right, next we have h of x equals x minus 4 times x minus 9. For the horizontal intercepts, we set this equal to 0. In doing so, we know that one of the terms needs to be 0, since the only way to multiply two things together and get 0 is if one of the items is already 0. So we set x minus 4 equals 0 and x minus 9 equals 0. This gives me the horizontal intercepts of x equals 4 and x equals 9. Okay, then to find the vertical intercept, we substitute in 0. So we do 0 minus 4 times 0 minus 9. This equals negative 4 times negative 9, which is a positive 36. So 0, 36 is my vertical intercept. Then let's look at the graph. So I have x minus 4 times x minus 9. Here we already have 4 and 9 as our horizontal intercepts, since this is already in the form x minus r times x minus s. So this is ideal when we already have it written in this easy to see form. We can just kind of pull out the horizontal intercepts. They're 4 and 9. Then the vertical intercept of 36 just isn't graphed here, but you could imagine if we zoomed out far enough, we would find it. Okay, we have two more. These next two I like because they're a little bit unique. I know we're doing lots of examples here, so hopefully I'm going through them quick enough to get us through this. So next, let's find the intercepts for x times x plus 7. We'll call this k. So first, for the horizontal intercepts, we take our function k and set it equal to 0. So we have x times x plus 7 equals 0. In order for these to be multiplied to equal 0, 1 also has to be 0. So we either have x equals 0 or x plus 7 equals 0. So x equals 0 is already solved, and then we can solve the other equation by moving the 7 to the right-hand side, and I'm getting x equals negative 7. So 0 and negative 7 are my horizontal intercepts. Then for my vertical intercept, I substitute in 0 for x. So I have 0 times 0 plus 7. This is just 0 times 7 which is 0. So the point 0, 0 is actually my vertical intercept. And we'll see that this means that this is a vertical intercept and a horizontal intercept. So it acts as both things. OK, so looking at the graph, we have x times x plus 7. Here I'm going to do a little work to write this in a clearer factored form, which looks like x minus r times x minus s. So instead of writing x, I'm going to write x minus 0. So this indicates that 0 is that first horizontal intercept. And then I'll rewrite the x plus 7 as x minus a negative 7. And so here that negative 7 is the other horizontal intercept. So 0 and negative 7 are horizontal intercepts. And that point 0, 0 is also the vertical intercept. All right, just one more. So. This one is going to have a different a value. So here let's have j of x is equal to negative 3 times x plus 10 times x minus 1. So to find the horizontal intercepts, we set this equal to 0. And now we have three things being multiplied together. So we're going to set each of them equal to 0. Negative 3 equals 0, x plus 10 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. 
So I like to write the negative three equals zero and then just cross it out, just to indicate that we're trying to figure out which one of these might be the zero. So one of them has to be zero. The negative three obviously isn't zero, but it's part of our process just to rule that out as an option. Okay, so now I just solve for x on the other two equations. I'm getting x equals negative 10 and x equals one as my horizontal intercepts. Okay, then lastly, to find the vertical intercept, I substitute in zero for x. I'm getting negative three times zero plus 10 times zero minus one. This is then equal to negative three times 10 times negative one, which when we multiply this through, we get positive 30. So zero 30 is the vertical intercept. Okay, let's finish off by looking at the graph. So here I have negative three times x plus 10 times x minus one. I'll rewrite this more clearly in factored form. So a is negative three, then I'll write x minus a negative 10, and then times x minus one. So now it's easier to see the negative 10 and the one are our horizontal intercepts. And the vertical intercepts somewhere up there, we just don't have it on this graph. Okay, so that was five examples of looking at different factored forms and finding both the horizontal and the vertical intercepts. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.